SABC will be launching an educational channel to help support learners to study remotely. The channel's robust PBS schedule ranges from formal, informal to interactive learning. The SABC Education channel will be digitally streamed via the following platforms. SABC Education Portal, SABC Education Virtual Academy, SABC 1, 2 and 3's websites and social media platforms. Check the SABC Education website for more information. SABC Education. Enriching minds, enriching lives. Kelejo Medisra la Morela Mora Daily Teta on SABC One. Kelebona SABC Education is our new channel on SABC Station. And we're going to be educating you in a formal, informal, and an interactive way. And you can find most of this information in all our channel and also our digital spaces. Kelejo Medisra, Nagalibito, Kim Nicolette, Oaga Machine, Monoka, Bush, Bakris, Mapula Ning, and also Lena Lemila Matoro, Kesesorina, and Disa, Waka Kevashi. Lehon Mora Dilser Level, the psychological effects of a crisis mm. sometimes you need to find yourself in a situation where you don't know how to maneuver and in that there you find ways and and many ways of trying to cope and be able to have a changed mindset a crisis is something that can leave you feeling weak or sometimes at the end of it feeling stronger. And today we look at how Tina as a Bantu we deal with a crisis. From you realizing Uguti into Mbiaki Kulelo to you realizing Uguti Umama and Gempela Gaseko and even for so to you understand the psychology of where you need to be during the times of tough times. Now, let me just tell you when you go to the job, you go to the job, and share your experiences in Pilo and what you've gone through utilizing your social media, which is on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And alternatively, you can send us a voice note or even just a video of you telling us about your experience on 072 316 Perhaps maybe we can start the conversation before we do invite Utabang Taka into our conversation. What was one of the situations that happened in your life that took you out of the comfort zone? Mm. I mean, I was involved in a car accident which almost saw, uh, my, I saw my life blink. I was in the hospital for three weeks. Yeah. And in that time, I got a very good opportunity to reflect in Piliyam and Fisayo, which at the time I was working in corporate. And in Piliyam mm. and in that moment, yeah. where I decided to pursue my dreams and here I am today. So for me, the crisis led me to a blessing. That's beautiful. And sometimes, Barry, it's not a bad life. It's just a bad day. We do get to speak to Tabang Klaga, who is a clinical psychologist. How does, how does it affect you when a crisis happens in your life? Something that you are not planning for happens. COVID-19 happened to the entire world. Mm. And for a lot of us, we were not really prepared for it. Tabang, welcome to Daily Teta. Ah, thank you very much, Nicolette and Melody. It's a pleasure to have you on our how show. Hi, Skona Putama. How are you doing? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm good. I'm good. Perhaps, Ray Tome Mota, Bayer, Narbutis, Horana, how much of our upbringing and our education and just our exposure to different lives really prepares us for dealing with crises? Well, it. it in, in an ideal world, your, your background should help you because um, part of parenthood is being prepared uh, to face crisis, is being prepared to be able to deal with whatever challenge would come along the way. Part of the education is to help you know that life will not always be fair. Life is not really fair. There are ups and downs. Mm. And so if, if you've got that kind of education and your mind is broad, you have a good understanding of the world about Ruta, uh, you were sheltered, uh, you were protected a lot, you were not prepared. A crisis is going to shatter your perspective on life. You might have a problem. Mm. 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 But Tabang, I mean, we were job school as as young kids. We, 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 whenever we had a crisis where we lost this kaftini, we lost the school bag, or a, a shoe is missing, fear was the first thing we dealt with. Do you think, Ngale and Jela, we were wired well to deal with our crisis in Pilin Yes, so our brain uh, is wired to protect us. So we have what we call a, a stress response. And our brain goes into a 
flight mm. or freeze mode. But that's to protect us, Hore. Uh, if you are going through uh, a crisis, your, your body needs to respond ag- appropriately. And um, and if you if you learn that that happens to you, and then you add language to explain what you are experiencing, you are able to come up with solutions. But if you get stuck at fight, flight, or freeze, you might struggle to deal with crisis um, mm. uh, in an effective way. But mm. mm. in psychology, is there any way to identify uh, only, um, let's call them different personalities. You know, there are, there are people who are open to experience it. So, only my tata or a challenge, they, they see it as, a, as an opportunity uh, to say, oh, this is part of life. What can I learn? What can I gain from it? I went through something terrible. I write a song, I write a film script, or I refocus my life. There are people with that open experience. And then, they are sensitive, maybe by neurotic. If they go through a crisis, they might struggle because maybe they, they want a perfect world or they're just sensitive to, to ups and downs, upheaval, stubble payload. So those kind of people might struggle to deal with a, a crisis. So a person's personality, a person's experiences in the past, if you have entertained the crisis, like uh, um, you've been prepared about the can go wrong, you save money, you understand, you've read the autobiography, and you then you will deal better with the crisis. So your your personality, your experiences, and the information you hand. Mm. Okay, can we then perhaps say Rumoto Ubelewa lead that sensitivity because personality amoto is inherently in them, or mm. can it be reshaped mm. by Rudisangwana or Honorumutu Sahore? Sometimes there are going to be bad days. Yeah, uh, there are some people, they are just sensitive by nature. Um, they go to a wedding, they cry, they hear a sad song, they are just generally more sensitive than Batwaba. That's mm. why we are able to do different uh, professions because an elite temperament is in this one. And now, what you can do, if you give them the right understanding that we live in a world where um, good things, and bad things can happen both to good and bad people. Mm. So if you're in the world, at some point, something bad you, do not think that if you are nice, life will always be nice. But if we are in a world where uh, things can happen to you, you may people die, you may lose money, you may lose health. And so if you have a good perspective, then Ohana will deal with the crisis because you are not shocked we experience her. Mm. And, and would you say experience we are able to identify when someone is not aware of how they deal with situations? Because that are able to self-identify which has in mina ngumunto sensitive, mina ngumunto so. Because I mean, we, we challenge with those kind of, we, we rather struggle with those things when dealing with Abantu, especially Ekaya. Yeah, um, good question. But a good self knowledge, yeah, 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 bona. They don't know what their limits are, what their strengths are. And Baba they are actually surprised by they thought something will crush them, but they are surprised by how they are able to survive. Some people think they are stronger than they think. Mm. And then they're in a situation mm. and they are surprised by but why mm. did I panic like that? Why did I act like that? I mm. think Kiba Tubao who have taken time to reflect who know a bit more about their mm. personality, who've gotten feedback from friends, family, mm. and uh, life experience, when I to deal with the crisis in a better way. Okay. Well, Tabang, thank you very much. You've really been ins- insightful. We'll be coming back to you later on in the show to have further conversation with Tabang. But I think it is quite interesting because yeah. And I mean, the Kasapulana, that means that you are overly sensitive. Mm. And over the years, I've had to learn, I can't be like this because people don't always perceive it the same way. And I call it Miss Lisa, when a man is sensitive, he's seen as weak. But actually, it's not. It's just how he is. It doesn't mean so maybe it does. Go to us, colleague. Second hand break. When you come back, it's
Welcome back to Daily Teta, speaking about the psychological impact of a crisis. Mm. And we just had a clinical psychologist, Tabang Tlaka, explain mm. to us, Hore, the way your experiences, your exposure, sometimes does speak to how you deal with certain situations. Sure. But listening and just understanding from different types of people that we're going to be talking to, we're now going to a situation where Buluechi, Mm. Uluechi is something that you are not expecting at any point, mm. you know. Everybody goes on their life believing and expecting Hore, we are healthy. But when an illness does come into your life, how prepared can you possibly be? Because mm. we know Hore, once the doctor says to you, there is something that is wrong with you, already mm. your mind also goes to a certain place. Mm. And we get to have a conversation with Hasirungwe Ramatapa, who was told, Hore, listen, you have cancer. Mm. How do you then deal with that situation? And, and before we even get into that conversation, I, I want to I wanna tap into the reality of that, that thought alone of Ukato flu to Saganjan. Yes. The thought alone of kicking umyang, that pain, but also now facing a reality that now could be a lifetime experience. And a life-changing or life-altering sickness mm. like cancer. Because, I mean, in our communities, you know, some of the, the illnesses that people really have to suffer through. Yeah. Cancer is one of those that really has a bigger role mm. in, in, in speaking about it. So it mm. must be quite a scary experience. Yep. But let's welcome Khasi to Daily Teta. Khasi, welcome to Daily Teta. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Khasi, I mean, firstly, we'd just like to say thank you for taking time to call me Nati. I mean, I, I would love to take a step and, and look into the life of Khasi. Before the day, Khasi, here is the situation. Tell us about your life. What, what was going on? Where were you in life? But when Zagalan? Um, so I found out about this in 2007, but even then, I was just a normal person. Mm. Nothing, I wasn't sick. I'm just normal. But we must check ourselves. So I would play around with my boobs and I found a small lump, but it said nothing. So I did nothing about it. Mm. Because I keep mm. I think nothing wrong with me. So I'm just going on with my life. Mm. And at this point, did, did, did you now feel like, what I'm man, uh, should I be worried or something? I'm an is and like the, the mental stage you were in in that time before you sat down with Tutor Hotel? No, not at all. Uh, remember, at this time, I'm young. I mean, uh, career, I'm happy. I'm working in films. There's nothing wrong with me. Mm. And it's a white woman's disease. So mm. why mm. should I check this thing? Mm. Nothing is happening. So up until two years later, when my breast started looking lopsided, but it's still not, there's still nothing wrong. Mm. I still didn't do anything about it. Mm. Khasi, the, the, the resilience, uh, our clinical psychologist, Tabang Klaka, spoke a little bit about having that resilience to be able to deal with such traumatic things. Now, we've seen you, and, and correct me if I'm incorrect, breast cancer, cervical cancer, ovarian cancer. Where do you find that resilience to go through such traumatic experiences? You know, um, I don't think you even know that you have this kind of resilience. Um, you just slept with this thing that you have to face and they, they, they don't even sit around the group. They, they, they tell you, it's a battle that you're going to have to the rest of your life. Some are even blunt to say you only have this certain time to live. And But fortunately for me, I met someone who worked very strong, one million people, mm. told me in life there are two people. There are fighters and there are people who just exist. Mm. You decide who, who you are. Mm. And I think that's when I started uh, building this resilience. I wanted to live. Yeah. I, mm. I wanted to beat this thing. Mm. So I just had to fight. And Tambo, I was talking about the different stages that you had to go through in this process. Yes, I can. Um, uh, the first stage is I went for a... Uh, I went for a regular checkup, and they, the doctor said she wanted to do a sauna. They did a sauna, and she saw some what looked like lumps, but she wasn't sure. So she referred me a mammogram. The mammogram um, concluded that it was lumps, and now they have to check if they are malignant. Mm. And they have to check, and when they do check, they found that yes, they are cancerous, and I was then on stage three, borderline stage four. So I was, by then, it was really almost fatal. 
Because maybe perhaps because we're watching you on screen, you are bubbly, you are vibrant, mm. you are beautiful. And people often think that a, a, a person on, or who has experienced a traumatic um, process in their life should look a specific way. Mm. But do, do you get people saying, but you don't look like someone who's gone through that? Oh, yes, I get that all the time. And um, I always say my own life is like, I don't want to look the way I feel. Yeah. Mm. No one has to, I, I, I also don't want to, when you look down, when you look like the way, with your, how your illness, people start feeling for you. And I feel like that's one thing that uh, drives us slowly to our grave. I don't want to people to feel sorry about me. Instead, mm. it, I want to pray every day. I want to celebrate every minute. Mm. So that I know what I'm fighting for. Mm. So that's how I've been living my life. Mm. And at what stage, Shambe, did you feel like fear was creeping up on you mentally? Like, I want to the, my first day of chemotherapy on the 10th of January 2010, I walked into this room and I'm young, I'm dressed up, I'm just like, I'm just going to take this IV and leave. This mm. thing is not going to kill me. I walk in there and there's just a bunch of old white, I'm this young black woman, oh, this thing, I'm just like, but I don't belong here. <laughs> I was very ignorant, I must say, and that's when the fear trip in, what are you doing here? Mm. Mm. And, and did you, were you thinking about in Ganzako at that time? Did it come to mind? Go to wait. Can I? I'm, I'm leaving my children. Uh, I think um, by then I didn't tell anyone. My family didn't know. My colleagues, no one knew actually. Mm. I had to keep it because I started uh, doing intense research around it, and I could see the cases of survival were uh, very low compared to uh, the, the, the death around this thing. Yeah. So that that scared me. But I had to I had to find a way of I thought I could fight them. I thought I could without them. I was wrong. You need support. Mm. You, need, you need love. You mm. need you need to go out. You need people to remind you what you had to fight for. So yes, my family, my my my, my kids, my siblings, everyone mm. where they call as a drive for me to fight this thing. Mm. Because often people, Barry, if you have experienced something like this, out of like a sepe, do you have do you feel that this specific experience has prepared you for any other trauma or crisis that may happen outside of the health sector? Oh no, no my darling. Um, after after my first shot of chemo, and I saw myself going back, and I was assigned for eighteen. A period of nine months. When I survived that, I knew you couldn't do anything else to me. Yeah. There is absolutely nothing you do. Mm. There is absolutely no crisis that I see as a crisis. Mm. Mm. Yes, if I do get fears just like everyone else, I get really how it is. So I always go into anything with. A threat of winning it. Mm, mm. And as, we, as we're sitting with, I mean, a, a crisis of our own, the whole world, I mean, wh what would your mental approach would be to Mbugelewe Tokilekaya, who's going through a crisis at this very point? Uh, this also is, gave us, I think it gave us a chance to reflect on what has been happening and what we are to each other as human beings. Mm. I just realized that is a crisis for everyone. And one day, someone said to me when I was like, why me? When they told me the second time that the thing was like, mm. he was like, when you say why me, it happened too. Mm. Mm. Which is true. Uh, no one is not going through anything. Besides mm. the corona, besides the illnesses, everyone is always going through something. The idea is to always see the light. I always approach things as like, this is not good. I put it out there. This is what I'm going to fight for, and I'm going to win. I think with that, we have challenges, but we can win it if we approach like that. Khazi, I'd like to do something special with you. Do you know the song, I Will Survive? I do. Let's go. Are you ready? We're going to sing it. We're going to start at the top. <laughs> One, two, three, go. At first, I was afraid. <laughs> I was petrified. I don't know the rest. 
Sisi sponga ku I was watching the call. I'm totally done. Asla, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for sharing your story as a cancer survivor. We appreciate and I'm sure you represent so many others that are there and watching Lamtanja with Daily Tata. Sebonga for being with us. With that, of course, being said, the conversations are Kubega, Sazo, Smuga, in different ways of other people and what they've been going through. I mean, we get to speak to Sissi Yvonne after the break, and she speaks about her, her actual challenges, what she's been through mm. as a person, but also, hey, Mbilo, how's that fun? Death yeah. is a serious challenge for all of us. Listen, I've, I haven't ex experienced Lee who that close to family mm. and I don't even think that I'm prepared. Mm. And I think that for me is the scary part. Or sometimes it's a little bit sore now. If they put me in that hot water, will I survive? But please do stay with us after the break. Welcome back to Daily Tether. If you're just joining us, we are talking about the psychological stress of a crisis and how do you deal with that. Now, right now, you know, sometimes when we speak about Li Fu, it's always like a scary thing for a lot of people because Li Fu is not something that is normalized for us to have a conversation purely because it's something that hits you by shock, by surprise. Even when it's inevitable, Jorge, at the end of the day, most of us are going to end up, you know, Passing away, it's not something that is easy to have a conversation about. Mm. And of course, we'll go for in this and go this is prepared. But it's even more painful when you, as a person who is a partner to someone and you lose your partner's life. As she lost her husband, who was M. Sebenzini, and not knowing that, just speaking and saying that I get right thing would happen whereby she then not know that that was the last time they actually would have a conversation. Well, since Yvonne Zorko joins us on the line at the moment to share a bit of her experience. Uh, since Yvonne, welcome to Daily Tata, Lago SAPC One. Thank you. Since Yvonne, I mean, um, firstly, to go, to go into an experience like this, I know for you it might not be as easy, but it's a bong, it's a cool. Since it's a little please take us through the day this happened and what you went through, Mark. Okay, it was on the 15th of October, 2012, whereby I got a call from my husband, my late husband, who was complaining that uh, her hand is sore. Mm. Later on that day, he was taken to the hospital mm. only to find out that uh, he was bitten by a poisonous spider. Mm. And he did not make it. He, he died. And and in that, ma, I mean, I, I'm I'm just thinking because I mean, you had recently had gone through the wedding, a new life coming, a new chapter coming together. This in I mean, did you feel like that that joy and happiness was short lived? Yes, because I was so very happy. I'm in one. Mm. I was so happy. Yeah, I wasn't expecting death at all. Sisi Yvonne. What do you go through? Is it something that you even thought about? No, I did not thought about that because uh, if someone tells you that uh, his hand is so, you you expecting that he's gonna come back. So, mm. Maybe he slept over on top of his hand, that is why it's so. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I followed, I went to the hospital only to find out that the matter has changed. Mm. He's mm. already turned green, mm. the hand is very swollen. Mm. Yeah. The doctor told me that he's not going to make it mm. and he's dying because they are suspecting that he was bitten by a prisoner spider. And mm. the e o na khane la mang o na khane la wena o na khana bo phelo ba be le bo prepare for yona o na khane la bana ke mang o mo na ganang kana ko e o ntse ke na hane la yena because ntse ke ba tla go bona yena fela a le gale yeah but unfortunately i was told who he no he, he won't make it mm. and and yeah. And when you think about it, Ma, how long did it take you to be ready or uweka yona tabaye or gwenze geganja nukutu muntu wako and how everything happened? How long did it take you? 
it takes me some couple of years. It wasn't easy to work on. Like, yeah, I don't usually talk about it. Actually, it's my first time to talk about it. Wow. That time to work on some of the uncomfortable spaces that you are finding yourself in right now where you are wishing or if things would be a little bit easier yeah if like Maybe life here come better. You know, better houses, better places. Yeah, so maybe it's Yeah, some of the plans. What were some of the plans, your dreams, you know, Beli Plana in? Oh, our plans, we. We, we had a quite huge plan. We wanted to buy a, a new house in a suburb area because we were able to do it. Yes. And yeah, and we were also planning our anniversaries mm. and also planning our second child. Mm. And, and so, Bobo. When it comes to adjusting, how did you adjust? I mean, I go to Luluvuge, who was with Mutmo Pila, and I stand with Sako as Seko. I go to Lulu, but I'm trying uh, because Kuna Makrut and Wa attend to make me feel strong. You know, uh, the next minute you will be fine, then the next minute we are changed and day. So, yeah, it is not it is not easy at all. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ceci, Yvonne, it's a it's trauma. How do how would you advise anybody else out there? Or she bling daily to salo kono kore. You know, sometimes these things happen. And ebu pelo tante bu 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 kubeke. Yeah, I would advise even though uh, how easy, but mm. more pillow, I may have to go to bed. I will advise you to hurry. Yes, you need to grieve, mm. but also you have a right to stop suffering. Yes. Mm. You mm. know, you need to learn how to cope better mm. Mm. and to feel joy again. Mm. 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 Yes. Mm. Even though it got to be easy, you know, because her really go to her now. Mm. Mm. And now you need to move on. Mm. When I originally out to go, you know, in terms of that that grieving process, so that at least more to a camera, when I are okay, then I'm going to go to go man, man, go and come man. Keep a little book, and you know, what 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 tools did you use? Mm. Uh, not actually something. And churches that I attend, mm. uh, the church that I go, uh, they played a big role in my life in Yaka. Mm. And also there's a group called in Bogoto. It's mm. on Facebook for widows, oh. whereby we share uh, the stories of how we have lost our husband and how sure. to mm. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Sissy Avontok, we want to say thank you as the Liteta for sharing your story with us and we appreciate it in how you are helping us help others Uguti Bantuliglis Katis a healing and process. Mm. And also in that, I mean, the one thing that we've learned, Nicoletta, about death is that death is final. And with that being said, it, we need to find a way to pick ourselves up and move. And I love what, what, one of the things she says is that you have a right to be happy again. Mm. It's, it's part of your life plan too, to be happy. And mm. which makes me ask, Nicolette, did you find that there was a stage in Pilinaco where you struggled from moving on from a particular uh, loss? You know, it, it might sound a little trivial, especially coming from speaking about Borokobobogolo. Breakups. You know, mm. breakups sometimes are very difficult. You know, I've got my whole life planned. Only to find out mm. that, you know, there are other plans for you. <laughs> We talk about moving forward and healing with your life.
Welcome back to Daily Teta. If you've just joined us, we're talking about the psychological effects and the impact and how do you get out of a situation, whether traumatic or a crisis, that happens so suddenly in your life. And right now we have a conversation with Kwanele Mbobo, who's going to explain to us the process of divorce. You know, it's not as final as a death that we heard in the previous um, um, conversation that we had, but mm. it is a painful process and often some people are inadequately prepared for it. We're joined on the line by Kwanele. Kwanele Welcome to Daily Teta. Hi guys, thank you so much for having me on the show. So, when you just get in the bin, I mean, go to start again back into your journey. Um, Uguti Usha Denini, Bessa isn't to Zashin Janin. Um, okay, I got married around 2017, mm. around April, and Sasha at the one Nandi, but I think we we went into the marriage see, seeing a course show what is really expected of us. We used parts more than our brains. Mm. Um, Sasha Adra, and then marriage comes. We now, like I was pregnant when we were getting married. We have mm. a baby like instantly after the wedding. Mm. Um, we are now new parents and new in this wedding thing. Mm. So Sasha Ujalo, um, we face a lot of problems. We we start dealing with things that we should have dealt with prior to the marriage. Mm. And we have shared assets and everything. So the pressure of that makes everything like it illuminates the problems actually mm. so um how old were you when you got married just to understand i was 20 i was 20, 21 okay mm. no 22 sorry i was 22 mm. Mm. okay mm. no yeah, no yeah. Okay, so Sisha Dilewunjalo Govelling in Ningi, mostly financial and um like I said, even psychological and mental problems that we were ignoring prior to the marriage. This is all obviously now because the Shalanda on ye gun a pressure yang any gun a pressure go 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 guy to provide, gun a pressure me not to be a mother and a wife. So yeah, quite better um we we realized we'll see we we there's a lot that we needed to deal with. Mm. There's a lot that we, we hadn't faced prior to the marriage. In our country, premarital counseling is so important. Because mm. you have to actually... Mm -hmm. mm. Be be before we get into the premarital counseling, because it's something about like, Ubule Le Kayona, let's talk mm -hmm. about... It, it sounds to, to us as if you guys were constantly finding crisis even in your marriage. How was right. it then to deal or make the decision to divorce and also dealing with that traumatic process? Because mm. yes, it might have been, you guys might be better off now, but it's still a mm. process and a traumatic one. Ooh, okay. Um, the, the most, I think, like I said, most of our crises were crises we were aware of prior mm. to marriage. Mm. So the only mm. thing was really now, second year, I'm married to this guy. Do I want to live through them. forever mm. because now the love part when mm. you live with the person in the house you know mm. you need to be able to love them with you need to be able to love who they are without what you could see prior to the marriage which is all the flowers all mm. the dates it's just mm. us so we we got divorced it got to a point where i personally said i can't do this anymore it was my decision mm. it was the most traumatic process ever it it, it was difficult mm. you know i always say people don't tell us what to expect when you divorce you see people prior to divorce and mm. after divorce mm. but during divorce it is so difficult you know the, mm. the feelings you know even when something is bad for you somehow it it, it who will talk or who who to separate mm. yeah if that makes sense yeah it, it's very hard to separate you can, it could be hard to separate from an abusive abusive husband mm. but course. because the process of separation generally and naturally is hard mm. you will go through the most i, I know now um i was actually on antidepressants mm. at the time I was on antidepressants trying to cope. There, were, there was a lot that happened, you know. I mean, mm. th there's, a, there's a lot that happened through the divorce process, the fighting, the, 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 the police, those type of things. Sometimes sure. it gets really ugly. Mm. But, yeah, you know, you know God um, brought us through, and I think we are fine. Even though we don't literally have a relationship now, we don't talk, we don't um, communicate at all. We do have a daughter together, so that is something else that we need to consider. And, and speaking about Mwana Lona, now, how did you then shelter Nwana from the trauma of that process, your divorce? Okay, so I personally was fortunate because the child was a baby. So my child is two years old. Yeah. So literally, we, we separated when she was three months. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay. So, so, so she, she actually wasn't affected. She doesn't really, really know her father because mm. she's been staying with me. Mm. So I must say, in, in that sense, I was fortunate that she didn't face any trauma due to us separating. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, I mean, who are the key pillars of conversation or what uh, you in this time when you are still going through the crisis within the marriage? Mm. Um, my family actually was there. Um, we, we had um, family meetings. You know how parents are. That's, that's literally their line. So we, we tried, you know. Mm. They also tried to step in to try fix things. But it got to a point where even my family was like, this cannot be fixed. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, when you hear those words, you, you, you also get a shock of your life. Because somehow inside of you, you still hope that maybe I'm being dramatic, mm. maybe it's the hormones, yeah. until someone else, you know, shows you that actually you were right. This cannot be fixed. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, my family was there, support, they were very supportive. Um, yeah. My sisters were there financially, emotionally, everyone was there. Mm. Um, mm. The family on the other side wasn't that involved, but I mean, I, I don't know what the reasons are specifically. Yeah. But mostly it was it was my family. They they were amazing through the process. So Siskwanele, I mean you're a mother now and Umuntu oh who needs to look forward to your life. you you have you have just about twenty five estimately and you have so much Pamugwako. How did you how were mm -hmm. you able to pick up the pieces and Kubega and Mbiliaku? Um, okay, number one, when you have a baby you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You don't have a choice but to pick up the pieces because someone else is looking up to you. Um, number two, I, I knew the person I was before the marriage and I knew the person I was in the marriage. Mm. So I needed to either be better than the person I was before the marriage or not try at all. Mm. And what I decided is that after this marriage and after that whole painful process, I'm going to be better. Otherwise, the pain wouldn't have been worth it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if, I, if, if, mm -hmm. if I'm going to learn from this, I have to take good lessons and I have to be better so I can speak about my experience and possibly make other people stronger. Mm -hmm. Kwanele, yeah. somebody may say or a divorce, uh, it's not something that happens suddenly. Mm. It's, it's a process yeah. as Lifi mm. and you make the decision to, to divorce. Do you embody mm. this divorcee title? Do you feel and sometimes it may hinder how you move forward, perhaps into a new relationship? Mm. No, not at all. I always say to people, nah, I'm not a survivor, you know, yeah. even that title like Iradi, I'm, mm. I'm not a survivor. I'm just somebody that, you know, that experienced something and moved forward. We all experience things. My sure. thing happened to be divorced, you sure. know. Yeah. Um, and no, if, if you're going to look at me and title me a divorcee, that's your problem. I'm mm. Guanele. Mm. I'm Guanele before I had a child. I'm Guanele before I got married. And this is a better version of Guanele that knows herself more. Yes. So, so that, that's literally how I just move forward. Mm. It, 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 mm. I'm not defined mm. by any of it. I'm not defined, about, I'm not defined by what happened. Mm. What defines me is who I decide to be. Who you think I am, that is literally just your problem. Mm. So Sis, that, that's literally how I face life every day. Sis Kwanele, I mean, I, I love your energy. Ntando moya wako, lenjele so kwazi, kutu wibo ni pilo ngakona. Kuno si so telekaya, na naye who has gone through what you've gone through, shati asem ngane, or tlampu tifosile, no masem tala. And you know, it comes mm. with the shame and pagati in guti, aibu, so we men dweni and stuff like that. What would you like to say to Umuntu who's going through the same thing, who has gone through what you've been through at this point? Um, firstly, what I can say to them is that you, when you were there, you know how you felt and people were not there with you. Mm. So when you leave, don't make people part of that either. Mm. You, sometimes, I, I wrote something recently, Kere, um, sometimes you have to let people think what they think mm. if it means you have peace in your soul. Mm. Sure, that is absolutely so beautiful. So always, always consider what gives you peace. You know, in every decision we make, we need to make sure it gives us peace. Sometimes it's a matter of um, fixing things, you know. Now I, 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 be, I firmly believe what a divorce must be the last avenue, mm. which is funny for someone who's got divorced. It must be the last avenue. It, you, should, you guys should try meetings. You should try, like I said, cancelling. Try everything. Mm. But when you know, Hore, you can't find peace and you are losing yourself, losing yourself is not worth what people say. Mm. Don't allow that to happen. Don't allow to lose you in mm. someone else or bend backwards for someone else because how badly to, mm. to, to be perceived a specific way. Mm. 
peace, peace is important. That's literally all I can say to mm. people, Hori. Make sure, Hori, whatever mm. decision you make, it brings you peace. And that's what matters. Thank you very much, Kwanele. Kwanele is an entrepreneur and a content creator. We appreciate your story and all the lessons that you're teaching to every single person. All right. I mean, it's quite an interesting one because sometimes, you know, people will say, but the grass is greener on the other side of yep. the boards. But forgetting that there are adjustments that you do need to make. So that is the traumatic process of it mm. all. But when we come back, we bring back Tabang Park. How does one move forward after a crisis? So do stay with us after Papacho. Welcome back to Daily Tate Telago SAPC One. If you missed the conversation, please be reminded that you can go onto our YouTube channel under FCBC Education to get all the latest of the conversations we've been having and even other shows. This is in Zile. Kota Lasses Kulma Kona, we're speaking about the reflecting point and understanding of Imizwa Yetu and honoring our emotions because we find ourselves bottling things and not allowing to express how we really feel. And those are part of this, the processes of healing. If it's losing a financial or income or even losing a loved one uh, who is still sitting with us and, and encouraging us and guiding us from a psychological aspect but tabang taka still on the line yes um i'm still here so, but I mean, just just to bring it closer to home, Jobasa we've heard the different stories and Abanta isn't about that they have gone through. In your opinion, when you speak about the healing process, how, how do we really start challenging that thought? So, number one is to recognize Hore, there are things that are going to come our way. So, when something happens to you, is to actually accept and acknowledge that this thing has happened to me. Mm. So, once you accept it, then you look for different perspectives. Hore, okay, this has happened to me, uh, and then so how do I process it? Uh, then you have a different process it, allow my good to Araho. If something has gone bad and it's sad, then it's sad, then that's what you need to feel. That's why you you need to be, but don't rush your healing process. Crying is what you need, then crying is what you do. Mm. If talking to somebody is what you need, is uh, that's what you need. Then after that, then you can start maybe exploring different solutions for, okay, I've been through this crisis. It mm. did hurt me. I did experience my emotions. Then you start exploring how to then uh, do practical things to to help you move on Gabo Pelo or to integrate your experience mm. your past, your present and your future. Tabang, I mean, a lot of people who go through a crisis, uh, the people around them are very important. You know, in the healing process, Abangani family play a, a key role. How do we also make those people understand that sometimes there'll be bad days and sometimes there'll be good days? Because in a crisis, in a situation. Yeah. But when we do want to cry, it seems like it's about weak. How do we encourage those around us to guide us properly? In, be, because we are social animals, we will always need. Sometimes it's actually a leadership act by showing your emotions. You know, sometimes you tell people, you know, I'm going through a hard time right now. I don't need you maybe to lecture me. I, I need you to sit with me. Mm. Or right now I need comfort. So you can tell people what you need. I need uh, time uh, to reflect. I need time to just be myself, to sit with my emotions. You can help me in these specific ways. And so I think as a society we can break that mold where uh, we look at people who are going through a hard time as if there's something wrong with them. Mm. And so I think it's quite a brave thing to express your own emotion, that's that's how you're going to heal. To pretend that something is not so, uh, it's just hurting yourself in the long run. So tell people what you need and don't be ashamed or afraid to feel pain because that's how you're going to heal. Mm. Uh, Budita Bang, how do you make sure you don't embody a crisis or trauma? How, how do you make sure you don't become a victim? Yeah, so nice question actually because a lot of people, they get stuck on the point, yeah, this happened to me, therefore I am this thing. Mm. So to shift our mind from this has happened to me is part of, uh, if my, my life was a storybook, it would be like a few pages or a chapter in my life, but that chapter is not me. My story is long. My story has a past, a present and a future. So if Kinele crisis is something that is part of my story, but that is not my main story. Mm. So you have to integrate the experience and then are we confusing with um, 
the, the thing that you went, you are not that thing, you just went through it. Mm. Mm. All right, that, that, that's very nice. I mean, it, it, it's very clear. I'm that person because mm. something has happened to me. If mm. it Maybe perhaps we can then move on. Is there always a lesson from trauma? Do, do you have to learn a lesson on the other side? Because sometimes if I, yeah, you went through this, see the lesson in it. What if I want a lesson? <laughs> uh, there's only a lesson in everything. Um, the, the main thing is not, you're not supposed to maybe go to got this profound lesson. Mm. Maybe the lesson is you've learned that things can happen to you and you can still come out of that situation. Uh, you've learned, or okay, if you were through this crisis, if it came around next time, Mm. So you don't have to pursue the lesson. It's just to recognize that when I went through that time, what were the things that helped me? Mm. And so, and that's how human beings learn. Whatever we go through, we integrate. So I'll say that's the main thing. Integrate your experiences. It just makes you a more well-rounded mm. person mm. and you are able to deal with situations better if they do occur again. Mm. You know, good uh, by building a trauma of experiences and boy book on a put sabang and gang sevens and gang name motto, nangi, nangi. How yeah. do we no longer hold on to that as the reason of our existence, but speak in life into last year corner because I want still struggle to let go during the healing process. Yeah, you know, there's a saying, um, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Mm. And some of these things really be the uh, crisis. They actually just come to help us refocus on what is important in our lives. The, the reason we feel and confused is because maybe other things more important. We thought maybe we were the car. We thought maybe we were the job. Mm. We thought maybe we were the salary or the money. But those were false uh, accurate pursuits, false identifications. So, but when you have a, a clear example of your worth, you are worthy by just being the person that you are. Sure. Then you realize, well, even when a crisis happens to you, uh, it, it's something to you, but it's not something that defines you. Our clothes, our jobs, our titles, that's not the main thing. And if we focus more on the we are confused when we, we feel a crisis because a crisis forces you to think differently mm. about what you thought you knew about the world. Mm. But Sabang, we really appreciate you for coming on to Daily Tetal. Uh, thank you and goodbye. And I hope there's a lesson you've taken. I hope there's something we told you, Lamtlanji. As of Caesar, from that healing in this time of crisis in anything that you've experienced, I mean, for me, it's, it, 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 it's quite a an interesting thing or something happened that you were not prepared for mm. you know tabang is, uh, puts it very clear you need to embrace it mm. but sometimes it's difficult to embrace often you know people will say nicoletti eats up her emotions she's, mm. she's, she doesn't know how to speak about something mm. so where does that education ultimately come mm. from and i think yeah and that's why I always encourage you to now Wumbugele Kaya Wuti read a book. I wonder if you're going through things, use that form of literature, Wuti Kuli. So hear people's stories. But remember also your story one day could be someone's reason to be okay. And when you're needing help, please do seek professional help. That the likes of Tabang Klaka, who is a clinical psychologist. Thank you very much for tuning in to Daily Theatre. Remember, we are right here every Monday to Thursday, half past ten to half past eleven only yep. on SABC One. Goodbye. <laughs>